Good evening and welcome to the news on the 31st of August. Two days ago, Hurricane Katrina hit the south coast of the USA, causing unprecedented damage to New Orleans and the surrounding area. We will now go to our meteorological correspondent in the USA, Alfie Curry. So, Alfie, what have been the main causes of damage from the hurricane so far? Hello, Ollie. I'm here in the outskirts of New Orleans. As you can see, there has been some damage, but not nearly as much damage as there have been in some of the poorest districts of the city. In this hurricane, the most major causes of damage have been the winds and the storm surge. The winds were up to 145 miles per hour, making this a category 4 hurricane. We've witnessed hurricanes of greater magnitude than this before. What was so special about Katrina to make it cause this much damage? Hurricane Katrina was very big, up to 100 miles across. This meant that winds were sustained for several, up to several hours in some, area, in some areas. Wind, winds for a long period of time. Uh, cause just as much damage as high winds for a short period of time. Remember, most of the damage is in fact caused by debris picked up by the wind, not by the wind itself. Earlier you mentioned the storm surge. Why was this so devastating to the city? A storm surge is a common feature of a hurricane. A huge wall of water pulled along by the power of the hurricane. The, the storm surge of Hurricane Katrina was up to 10 metres high when it hit the coast. It particularly devastated a town called Biloxi on the coast where it was this height. New Orleans was badly hit by the storm surge because in fact below sea level. And now I'm going to explain why New Orleans was flooded so severely. The area around New Orleans is actually below sea level. Uh, as you can see here, this is about zero meters above sea level, so it, got, it trace about here. Now this is Lake Pontchartrain, uh, and that is usually relatively low, so below these flood defences here. But the Mississippi is much higher on the bank, so it will, they, and, but it also has flood defences. However, these were poorly maintained, so when the water rose to rough, roughly five feet here, and 10 feet above here. Um, the flood defences breached and water was allowed, water could flow down here. And now, there were a few, there are a few um, higher ground places such as here where the water may not have reached but it still would have flooded all of this area and probably most of this area down here as well. The storm surge, when it picked up pieces of debris, like the winds, caused even more damage. So, how badly affected has the area been in terms of people and businesses? It is very bad. There's been a vast amount of destruction of property and businesses. Businesses have had to, be, had to move on because their premises have been destroyed. Thousands of houses have been left without power. Water has been contaminated by oil, snakes and salt water, meaning it is extremely dangerous for people who are in badly affected areas. Wasn't there an evacuation? How come there were people still left in their houses when the hurricane struck? There was a mandatory evacuation ordered by Ray Nagin, Mayor of New Orleans, on the 28th of August. However, uh, one million managed to escape but many were left in the city due to congestion on the roads and a lack of a coordinated plan with no uh, bus service or any kind of help to get people out of the city. Some also simply decided to stay, which is obviously a bad idea since it was an extremely terrible event. Uh, many decided to seek refuge in the Superdome. The Superdome was in fact partly destroyed, and it is now clear that it was not a good idea to go to the stadium. Conditions are extremely bad there. Disease is spreading, and there is no end of going out and going to save people who are suffering in poverty. Many people have also 
turned to crime, looting shops, casinos, and businesses. And how the US government and other aid organizations responded to the crisis. The response was slowed on the 29th of August, as the organizations had to wait for the storm to pass over before they could go in. After that, the response has been limited. The Red Cross have been working throughout the area, but not actually in New Orleans, where most of the damage has been. The government has only saved the people who are worse affected, leaving others in bad conditions and leaving bodies to rot in the right near living people. A lot of the response has not in fact been saving people, but stopping the crime that is happening in the city. We have witnessed this crime, and I have talked about this crime earlier. However, the response in some cases... But there is hope today, as Ray Nagan has ordered a complete evacuation of the city. President Bush has convened a federal task force to deal with the problems in the city. And a public health emergency has been declared, meaning food and aid can be brought to the coastal cities much easier. Thank you for that, Alfie. And now we're going to find out how this hurricane became so deadly. Hello, my name is Professor Spillett, and now I'm going to explain how a hurricane is formed. A hurricane forms when strong clusters of thunderstorms are over warm seas, so this sea would be quite warm here, uh, and it, yeah, they have to be up 27 degrees, 28 degrees, that's sort of the right temperature for a hurricane to form. Uh, now the warm air creates, uh, uh, the, the warm sea rather, would uh, warm the air over here, which, creates, which means it, it loses pressure as it expands and rises. Um, then cold air from out the sides gets drawn in and this sets up sort of a, 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 what's called a convection current where warm air will go up and then across and cool and come back down again. Um, and because of the Coriolis force and the rotation of the Earth, uh, the, uh, as it gets bigger, the, uh, the system starts to spin. And as the winds become higher and higher and higher and the rotation becomes faster and faster, that's when the, it starts to, starts to become a hurricane. The winds in a hurricane, uh, they spiral anti-clockwise, uh, and uh, the hurricane is, uh, gains energy and strength when the cool air is sucked in quicker and draws moisture up off the sea surface. Uh, and then when this gets to a certain height, it condenses, releasing energy and uh, fueling the storm. Now, a storm needs to get to 63 kilometers an hour winds to become a, tropi uh, a tropical storm, sorry. For a tropical depression has to have winds of 63 miles an hour to become a tropical storm. And a tropical storm has to have winds of 119 kilometers an hour or more to become a, uh, a hurricane, rather. And now, uh, the structure of pretty much all hurricanes is this. You have the eye of the, the, eye of the storm, uh, where it is a very, usually a very calm area, uh, and it, the size depends on how big the hurricane is. Uh, then you have the eye wall. These are the, this is the strongest area of uh, winds. These are the strongest winds. They're travelling the fastest. And as you go out, the uh, winds travel are not travelling as fast and may cause less damage. And now I'm going to explain uh, how Hurricane Katrina progressed from a tropical depression to a hurricane. Hurricane Katrina started as a tropical depression around the Bahamas um, before traveling and becoming a tropical storm towards Florida and then going down into the Gulf of Mexico and then being a strong hurricane up to the New Orleans and Biloxi area and up to the USA turning back into a tropical depression as it went further over the land. It first became a hurricane just before it hit the coast of Florida and was a category one hurricane here. It then carried through into the Gulf of Mexico where it gained strength over the water, creating a category two, three, four, and eventually around here, a category five hurricane. 
it lost some of its energy before it hit the coast, where it was a Category 4. And Biloxi was the worst hit here with the storm surge. Uh, the hurricane then continued up through the USA, gradually, quickly losing strength. Going to three, two, one, a tropical storm, and finally a depression again. Thank you.